Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams again, and today I'm going to talk to you about the difference between permutations and combinations. Before we get to these um, permutations and combinations, I want to take a little trip down memory lane about factorals. Remember, the factorial function is an represented by an exclamation point, and it basically says to multiply all whole numbers from our chosen number down to 1. So for 4 factorial, it would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you have a graphing calculator or a calculator with functions, if you can find this exclamation point, it will take you all the way from here all the way to here in probably less than two keystrokes. So factorials play a key role in finding these permutations and combinations. The key idea in permutations and combinations is one of order. So when we look at permutations, we say position matters. In other words, we are going to arrange our required or R number of items in a very specific order. When we look at combinations, position is irrelevant. Really all we care about in combinations is which ones are we picking to put into our group of R items. So think about the difference between arranging items and grouping items as we move forward. So in permutations, what we know is that the same set of objects taken in a different order will give us a different permutation. In other words, A, B, and C is not the same as B, C, and A. Think about your PIN number, right? Um, your PIN number may be 1, 2, 3, 4, but if you put it in as 4, 3, 2, 1, um, they're not going to process your debit card. On the other hand, combinations, I take the same set of objects, I put them into a different order, but it does not give me a new combination. We consider A, B, and C and B, C, A to be the same thing. So in combinations, this will give you one group and in permutations, this will give you two different arrangements. So let's look at the same example two ways. So I have a club that has 10 members and I, there are, I don't know how many ways that I can pick a chairperson, a secretary, and a treasurer, assuming a person can hold only one office. So I'm going to put three members of this club into different positions. Mary is the chair, Tom is the secretary, Julia is the treasurer, and then I'm going to think about it and say, well, what if Tom was chair, Mary was secretary, and Julia was still treasurer? Ask yourself, are these the same? And the answer is no. And because our answer is no, what we know is that out of our N possible items, we positioned or picked our required slate of three officers. So when we look at the permutation formula, we say out of the number we have, which in our case was 10, we are going to position a required number of items, which was three. And so here are your factorals. It's N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. When we apply it to our question, that becomes 10 permutation or position three. So moving down, right, we expand our factorals, and what we immediately notice is that these and these cancel out, leaving us simply the 10 times the 9 times the 8, which gives us 720 ways that the three offices can be filled from the 10 club members, knowing that a, B, and C is not the same grouping as C, B, and A. 
Now let's take the same group. I still have 10 members, but my question here is, how many different ways can three people be selected from the 10 to attend a conference? So I'm not putting them into a position. In this case, I'm trying to determine how many different groups of three people can I send to the conference? So my first grouping is Mary, Tom, and Julia. And my second grouping is Tom, Mary, and Julia. Well, when I look at these two, I ask myself, are these the same? And my answer here is yes. It's the same people going. It's the same group of three going. And none of them have a quote unquote position. So in that case, I know that out of my N objects, I chose or combined them into smaller groups of my required number of three. So what does the combination formula look like? Well, a lot like the permutation formula. I'm still, still dealing with 10 objects and I'm choosing groups of three, but I can't count um, the doubles, right? Because I know that A, B, and C is the same as C, B, and A. So what I do is I take the permutation formula and I divide out the duplicates. So now I have 10 combination three, looks like this when I look at my factorial. Note, what this is not is this is not seven factorial times three factorial. This is not equal to 21 factorial. A lot of students make that mistake. Instead, I take my 10 factorial up here on the top. Here's my seven factorial and here's my three factorial. So I'm going to start crossing out stuff that cancels out. And you'll notice I'm left with the same 10 times 9 times 8 that I had before. But now I've got to divide it by my 3 times 2 times 1, which literally gives me my 720 divided by 6, which results in 120 different groups of three members that can be made from the 10 members when I'm making groups and I'm not arranging them in some kind of specific order. So just to summarize, always think of permutations as being how many different arrangements can be made from a group of people or items. Because if you see the word arrangement in your question, you're always going to be dealing with a permutation. On the other hand, combinations are asking us how many different groups of people can be made from a larger group. And in a combination question, remember, it only matters which ones we choose. We are not putting them in any particular order. We're simply trying to make groups, smaller groups, from the larger whole. So I hope that this helped. If you want to see videos on how to work these questions in Excel, head back over to my YouTube channel. I've got some videos on that. Until then, I hope you have an awesome day.